I know how it is when you, you know, I used to pastor. Whenever pastor brings in a new speaker, you kind of sit there and you're wondering, well, how is he going to be? And uh, what's going to happen? But you know what? When you trust in the person of the Holy Spirit, you know he's going to take care of you. Amen. 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 Oh, I am so excited. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And let me say you on this. Uh, I want to be like the Apostle Paul and preach all night, but I know come 745, y'all folks from Ohio gonna get up and walk out because the game is on the night. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am hoping and praying that LeBron wins this championship. Now, I don't know how he's going to do it. But I'm praying for LeBron, all right? I feel bad for this guy. If he doesn't win... It's bad. But anyway, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that they can pull this one off tonight. So therefore, we're going to let the Lord move, and we're going to get out of his way. Amen? Amen. I have a word from the Lord. The Lord dropped this all this week. I heard these words, but we all. And, uh, hallelujah. And, uh, and I just kept hearing it in my spirit, man. But we all. And uh, I believe the Lord is going to do something mighty in your midst. And I believe that uh, shifting... And God is going to revamp some areas of this ministry. And I believe you guys are going to see God do it. Amen? Amen. It's one thing, you know, you know, I don't know about you, but you can pray for so long that you get weary in the midst of it. And the Lord, if you can give your glory and your presence to energize us, it'll transform us. Amen? Amen. All right. If, I, if you're going to be so kind, go with me to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. And when you have it, please stand out of honor for the word of God. Jesus said in Luke 4 and 4, uh, he said, uh, he said, he said, man cannot live by bread alone, by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Second Corinthians 3. The psalmist said, your word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. Oh, the word of God is right. Amen. Yeah. I thank God for his testimony. Yeah. His statues. Amen. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe the Bible says, Job said, I found your word and I ate it. Yeah. And it was as the joy of and the rejoicing of my heart. Your word is like fire in my bones. I embrace your word. Amen. Amen. Your word has I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. I want to sin. But your word raised the standard. This is the word of God. Glory to God. This is living. Amen. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians 3 and 12. Hallelujah. Saying, seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all. Alright. Move from just Moses to we all. Amen. Can we say that together? But we all. But we all. all right, say it again. But we all. But we all. Can we put it this way? Advanced church all. Advanced church all. With open face, beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Advanced church change into the same image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. If he would have just said a few, we would have said, okay, just a few. But he said to us all, amen? amen. amen. We will just simply title our sermon this morning or this afternoon, But We All. Amen. Say that with me. But We All. But we all. Individualize it. Say your name. Jesse but All. all. Shall behold. We title our sermon, but we all. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your word. Your, your word. Thank you that yokes are broken by the preached word of God. I ask that you hide flesh behind the cross and let Christ alone be exalted. Think through my mind and speak to my vocal cords. I ask, Lord, that you grant us utterance in tongues. And we covet earnestly the gifts of the Spirit. 
We ask, Lord, that by the work of your spirit that you'll come amongst us. We don't need a man, but we need you. We don't need protocol, we need you. We need your anointing that shatters every chain. My God, I thank you, Lord, for what you promised you would do. Let your glory fill this house like never before. Yes. Let your glory inhabit this place. Yes. Be enthroned in, in, the, in the praises of your people. Yes. I ask, Lord, for clarity of mind. And let every word be spoken. And let me speak on your behalf as an oracle of God. It's the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said amen. 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 We all. I like the, the inclusive term terminology of God that he tells us that we all want to just experience this. It would seem to be unfortunate that under the Old Testament, God only allowed a few to experience his presence. presence. But however, under the New Covenant, he says, I'm interested in a people following after me. You may you ever remember that a lot of times what we do is we, we say, okay, God, I want you only but to an extent. But when we come into full contact with the Spirit of God, our life is revolutionized. I think to me, the Lord showed me, uh, I believe, earlier part of this year, in some time, he said, my people have forgotten the movement and the operation of the Spirit of God. We do a lot of great preaching. We do a lot of great of this and that. But there's a lot of an authentic movement, movement of God. We build mega churches. We say, oh, look how big this church is and that church. But God, are you really moving in on this? Don't know about you, but I want to see the power of God. I want to see the glory of God. I want to see the demonstration of your spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. If you promise it in the scriptures, let me behold it right now. Oh, bless God. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Want to see you in greater reality. Well, number one, under the Old Testament, the spirit was designated. Look here in verse 12. It says, seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Now stop there. I saw this earlier. Uh, it's interesting in the text that Paul said, now he says, we don't use dark sayings. On the Old Testament, things were kept hidden from them. They didn't walk in revelation. But Paul says, we use plainness of speech. We allow you to know what God is doing. There's an inner discernment that God puts among his people. Now let us know that this is true. This is the word of God. This isn't just man speaking, but this is God directing us. This is God showing forth his power like never before. I want to see the unabated move of God. Then he says in verse 13, Now that's Moses, which put a veil over his face. Oh, designated. So here the, the text in the book of Exodus says that Moses goes into the glory of God. Yes. I, let me just stop there. I don't even want that in my notes, but it is amazing that when Moses got into the presence of God, he was so comfortable with God, he asked God a hard saying. He said, Lord, show me your face. God says, I can't show you my face, but the part I can show, I'll let you see. Oh, glory to God. There's something about when God says, I'm willing to expose part of me so that you'll know me in an intimate way. That you'll move into a fresh level of worship. That you'll move into a new element of grace. Then the Bible says, just seeing the portion of God's back, the hinder part, he was overwhelmed by the glory of God. To put a point that when he came down off the mount, the people couldn't look upon him because the glory of the Lord was so strong. The Bible says that Moses put a veil on his face. In other words, he restrained the power of God from them. Oh, God. They couldn't take what Moses received. Oh, my God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> they couldn't handle what the man of God received. Yeah. There's something about getting into the presence of God that transforms your life forever. Yeah. But God actually earmarks you and says, you are mine. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, do it in my life. Oh, God, get me into your glory, amen. Don't leave me on the shower banks. Take me into the deep. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Don't want to get out. I feel bad for Israel. They couldn't take the presence of God. That's why in Psalms 103 it says, it says this way, Israel saw the acts of God. Moses learned the ways 
of God. He learned how God does things. The way God speaks. Israel said, I don't want to hear him talk. Let you hear him speak. Moses said, I'm the man for the job. I'm willing to hear him talk. The Bible says, God told to him face to face. Oh Lord, let it be me. Let it be me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it be me, God. Oh, hallelujah. Bible says in verse 12, I'm excited this morning, y'all. Amen. Oh man. God, don't put a tail up when you see me. Let me all let it all drop. Let me behold your beauty. Let me behold who you are. I saw the Lord, and he was high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. I don't want to see you for who you are. I want to see your glory. I want you to become so comfortable with me that you can talk with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard you heard you speak a few sentences. Oh, God, if you could just talk to me. You can let me know the challenge. God, I'm challenged in this situation. God, I don't know how you're going to deliver me in this lawsuit, but I, I trust in you. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Oh, in Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. Oh, I want to behold you, God. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. She put a veil over his face and the children of Israel. But not steadfastly look at the end. That's the key thing. So that means what Moses got was going to eventually be done well with. So it was designated for a moment. Oh, God. So that means the best way I can say it is your car wash. I don't know about you. You ever been there when you go through the car wash? I enjoy that. That just... It's just fun to me go through a sit down in a nice car watch. Then you go through it to the end. Car is spick and span clean. Yes. But lo and behold, that clean is going in when that bird finds your car. <laughs> you ever had that so when you drive out? Yes, I know that bird just didn't do that to my car. In other words, that clean was for a moment. My God. That's the way it was with Moses. Mm. The glory of God for Moses My God. was for a moment. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In other words, the, uh, the, uh, the nation of Israel, they're looking for a Messiah like Moses. Similar to Moses, who uh, he, they can only experience it for a moment. Mm. I don't want momentary walk with God. Because I walk with the devil every day. Come on. But God says, yeah. I want to get you off from just a church high to every day that we commune with each other. Where there's no ending fellowship. There's nothing to end with. This thing we have is forever. Glory to God. Don't care if I'm with my wife or not. The covenant her and I have is forever. If I leave her presence, I know she's still there watching me somehow. Come on out. What we have in this ring gives us understanding whether she's with me at the moment or not. We are in covenant That's with right. each other. That's, right. That's the same way with God. God said, Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. I covenant not just for the moment, but for eternity. Glory to God. Oh, shut up, I don't see that. He says it this way. Could not stand fast and look to the end of that which is abolished. Oh, glory to God. So it was just designated for a moment. Means eventually the glory would fade off of Moses. And that's what happens a lot of times in our walk with God. Sin, de sin destroys that glow of God's presence off of us. God. We're walking strong with God. I've passed it before. I've seen people walk with the Lord for a time, look like they're on fire. But all of a sudden, the trials and the temptations, or the Bible says, the desire for other things, they settle for what God really wanted them to have. They settle for less than what God wanted them to have. So the glory fades off of their life. You ever had that? Well, I remember when they used to have this with God. I remember when it was just like this, but I don't want it to be said like that about me. I want it to be said like he not. He walked with God. That God was so pleased that I doesn't get tired for you to be elevated with me. It's the glory of God being on your life. 
No more power, nothing momentary. It's this drive in my heart, Lord, keep me. Yes. God, keep me from me. Yes. Keep me from my desires. Yes. God, just give you, because I don't want to set, I don't want to lose out of your relationship with me. My God, would it be so failed that I was right on the cups of a breakthrough, but I missed what God had for me? Because I got caught in the natural. I start to view the natural as too real, but not realize that the supernatural was where God had called me to. That God had called me to function higher than ever before. And God, by His power, wants to take me higher. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Glory Glory was designated to a person. Secondly, the glory would eventually depart. Verse 14. But their minds were blinded. For to this day remain the same bell and take it. Away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in Christ. It's interesting that the Old Testament, though holy writ, still keeps a veil over their eyes. My God. So revelation comes until the person of Jesus shows up. So that means when people, I hear you know, hear Lewis Fair kind of different ones, they'll read the Bible and they'll say, well, I, I, I believe, uh, they'll, 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 they'll articulate it as truth, but they can't embrace it as truth. My God. Because Jesus hasn't stood there. Until there's a revelation of the person of Christ, truth cannot be seen. My God. Come on. It becomes just words from a book. Yeah. It sounds like a good saying. Uh, it sounds good. But then, when Jesus comes, the veil is unlifted. Mm. But then notice he says in verse 15, but even until this day, when Moses is read, hold up. Until right now, when Moses is read, it's just words on the book. My God. So under the Old Testament, revelation could be given because it was under the Old Covenant. But when Jesus came, they need the Spirit of God to illuminate the truth. He says, but even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. That means that the veil, the word of God, cannot permeate sufficiently because they cannot believe in Jesus. 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 Oh, help That's us, Lord. Word, sir. That's help us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't let us become so casual where we're hearing. Now, notice, they're hearing the word, but the word cannot take no effect. My God. Oh, Jesus. My God. My God. My God. They're hearing the word. Yeah. But there's no root to it. Yeah. The seed of the word of God cannot germinate on the inside of them because of their hearing or the lack of reception from their heart. For example, uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I never had this, but the CB radio. Mm -hmm. If the other person does not, is not tuned into the right That's station, right. Right. you cannot hear. That's right. Amen. <laughs> You're in the wrong station. Come on. And that's the same way with them. Or for example, with your cell phone. I don't know if your cell phone works this way. If you are actually were driving along here, and there's a point in the GPS in my phone, it would not work. Because I was on the wrong frequency. Lord, tune me right. That I can hear you. Uh, let me give you another example. We have a piano at home, a standard piano. My daughter hates it, amen. But I told the Lord, let me get the side note. I told the Lord, I said, you give me my ch these children, all of them, both of them will take piano lessons. Because I know how hard it is when your pastor can't find a piano. Uh, pianists, amen, just hard. You blessed to be able to play. I can't play a scene, so I'm jacked up all around, amen. You're like a triple threat, amen. <laughs> Y'all don't know. We, we'd be sitting there. I remember I had. Oh, let me get to my story. But we had a piano player, and he would show up. Come to find out, the dude was on drugs. Oh. We spent over two, almost two thousand dollars on a on a, a little piano. I was so mad. But anyway, but the piano player, the standard piano at home, it has to be tuned mm -hmm. for the full function. Mm -hmm. That's the work, the inner work of the Spirit of God, where He retunes my spirit oh my so I can hear. Oh so I'm receptive oh to what God is saying. Oh where I'm playing in the sufficient right key. Where there's no missing with God. Where God to the point has, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter, it says, for the time when you ought to be teachers, you have to tell someone you need to teach you again the very principles of God. You have need of milk and not meat. For those who use meat, milk, 
are unskilled in the word of righteousness. But those who matured have trained their senses to exercise between discern between good and evil. So when God tunes me, He tunes every part of me. My touch, my eyes, my my my, my senses. I can do like Paul. I perceive that this voyage has been danger. I can't tell you how, but I walk with the Spirit of God. We got into my senses where he walks with me and talks with me that my spirit man is alert to what God is saying. That's what means to walk with God. Get down all the people. Come on. Oh, now, yes, Lord. I want to go do wrong. Yes, Lord. But the restraining power of God Ooh, is in oh, oh, right. I'm, I'm a man now. I want to look to the right. right. But your spirit keeps me looking straight. That's right. Amen. Come on, my wife. Amen. That's right. I want to cuss you out. Come on now. But notice, he got into my senses. Yeah. So when the word would get there, yeah. the, the curse would make formulate. But I, mm -mm, that don't taste right. Yeah. My, my, I don't feel right. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be out of tune. I want to be in the right. Glory to God. Jesus. God, grow me up so I can walk with you. In the midst of the disappointment and hardship, I know how to handle it because I see you there. I need to know that you're right with me. I'm going through some valleys, but you're with me. I know I can go through it. It might not change overnight, but might not change in a year or three years. But you've got, we've gotten to a point which you know, that I know that you're walking with me. Amen. That you've tuned me to your right. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, number one, the spirit of the, on the Old Testament was designated. And secondly, the glory would depart. Now, this is my sermon right here. The glory should be developed. It should be developed. Let me tell you something. One of the problems with churches, again, I can say this because our hearts become so passionate about what God we want God to do that when it hasn't happened like we want it to happen, we become so disappointed. My God, my God, oh God, my God. I remember, the pastor, I'm fasting, sitting down, and doing everything I know to do. And one of the problems with walking with the Lord, if I'm just be honest, I mean, some people say it's a problem. Well, the problem is sometimes the Lord don't tell you overnight what's going to happen. No, He don't. Mm -hmm. He just He just says, "Okay, just be patient and walk through this thing." Yeah. There's a problem. One of the things with walking with the Lord is that He He's not in a hurry. No, no. He's not. He's not. No, he's not. Just, just yeah. you know, I, I look in the mirror and I see the gray hair and I get in a, in a hurry. Right, Jesus. But He says, "Well, no, you just be patient." Yes. <laughs> My daddy used to tell me, he said, if you just wait on God. Just wait on God. I wanted God to do this by the time I was in, in five years. Oh, it has to happen this way. But I found something that if, if, if I'm going to walk in the glory of God, it has to be developed. Oh God. God can't trust me with more than I can handle. Oh, I, 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 if God was, you know, I'm trusting God to do this and this and that. But can I really, is it going to cause me to turn my back on you? Yeah, 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 yeah. God, you know the intricate parts of me. So develop. Yes, he does. <laughs> Amen. Oh, God. Verse 16, it says, Nevertheless, when it shall to turn, you in the house, though. turn to. That Greek word turn to is the Greek word epistrophe. The word is epi means upon, a strophe to turn. When the word is combined, it's really a sense of worship. That action, this action is sent to Moses when he turned to see what was going on or who was talking to him in the burning bush. Notice this, when he's turned, that's an act of worship to the Lord. So really, for the Lord, you know what he says? He says this way, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to or worship the Lord, the veil is taken away. All right. So notice, Moses was at one time, was tending the sheep. All of a sudden, something calls his eye. He turns to look at it. That's the same way, that's the same ideology in this text. That all of a sudden, I'm walking with God, then all of a sudden, I turn to him, and then something happens. A veil is removed. Now, in the, in the text, this, that veil is referring to all, the Old Testament, to the children of Israel. When they turn or worship the Lord, the veil is destroyed. That's the same thing that happens to us at times. I'm worshiping God, I'm walking with God, but somehow God unleashes the, or changes my thinking on things. Oh God, God. That veil is removed. 
I don't see things the same way. The revelations I thought I have is exchanged for deeper understanding, deeper glory where you want to take me. Lord, remove the veil so I see you properly. Remove the veil so I go higher in you. Don't leave me where I'm at. Remove, come on now, remove the veil. Break the yoke of my thinking so I see you. I bind the devil that said we're going to stay like this. No, the veil shall be broken. The veil has to come down by the power and the glory of God. When you turn to worship, you unleash the power of God in your life. Amen. says, it shall turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, you ever been there where initially I know God spoke for me to do this, but he makes a shift to me and make another turn. I'm willing to allow God to be flexible in my life. Yeah. Oh, God. Some of us are so stuck to what we, I know this is God. I know it. It may very well be God for that moment. Amen. 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 So why can't we embrace the Lord? Okay, wow. God. Are you turning me to a different way? My God. Yes. Yes. Wow. Let, me, let me be flexible with you. Yes. The Bible says, you don't give a word on it. I don't give you a word on it. The same God who told Abraham to go up and kill Isaac was the same God who told him to stop. That's God. Why he did it, that's his business. He's God. I can't move him. To my direction. That's right. I move towards his direction. Right. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Look here, he says, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Some of us need to shift our movement to see greater glory. You know, it's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with saying, okay, we're going to actually move out of the city, move to another location. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with moving. Because we're looking for God. It's interesting that we tie ourselves to, to things that God hasn't tied us to. Amen. We tie ourselves to stuff. Amen. No, I'm going to die doing it. We're going to die doing this. No, I ain't dying doing anything. If God tells me to stop and I'm going to just get up and move and do something else. God is, God is fluid. It's interesting. Since we're talking about Old Testament, Testament Old Covenant, isn't it interesting? That the same presence of God who told him to move to another location, to another location, mm -hmm. to another. God is about movement. Mm -hmm. I don't care, you know, because you know, people prophesy some of everything. God, yay, yay, yay. God is giving you this city, yay, yay, yay. But what, what is God speaking to me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me fresh revelation. Mm -hmm. I ain't telling you, you know, people say so many things. What is God saying? Yes, Gone is the day of us just waiting before the Lord. Everybody got a word from the Lord, but not many of us are willing just to wait. Now, you know what? This is just discern. Just wait, wait, wait. wait. I, I got to say this. No. Why can't you just wait on God? Wait on God. There you go. Oh, say, you say, That's son, right. just wait on it. Wait on it. Just be patient with yes. the Lord. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can remember, I, I remember the Lord called me to preach in 1994. I remember I was still, actually, my dad walked his, off this job in June of 1974. The Lord told him, because you obeyed me, I'm going to give you a son. He called him to the ministry. My dad was a full-time minister. Now, from the moment he told my, my father in 1974, I would be called to preach. I did not desire to preach until, I didn't hear the call for myself until November the 12th, 1994. My dad waited almost 20 years. Mm. <coughs> Say, come on, sir. Yeah, 20 Say. years for the promise. Say, Ooh, a waiting God. Yeah. Yeah. And daddy used to get up and say it all the time. I used to be so mad. You know, I was a teenager. I said, Lord, I'm, I ain't preaching. I'm going to heaven. But I ain't preaching. <laughs> <laughs> but he walked with God. He would say, Jesse. This is my daddy used to Jesse. God gave me you. Mm -hmm. He told me, you're going to preach. Now, through the valley, the terms of my teenage years, he would tell me, God told me, I called you. There's a difference when God has just hammered that thing to your word. 
And they, there's a difference when you're hearing so many other voices and not waiting on what God is saying. And the way Daddy would tell me, he said, son, I don't care. If I'm on my last breath, I'm going to see you preach. Mm -hmm. And he saw me preach. Mm -hmm. There's a waiting to be developed by God mm -hmm. that us modern Christians are not willing to wait on. Come on, yeah. sir. Yeah. That's what we want. I want to hear God. My God. I just want to wait. It's nothing wrong with being in a holy pattern of God. My God. As long as you're with me. Mm. If you hold me in this spot, but you're here with me, I'm okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, God. Yes. If you hold me here, if you want to say, son, wait here, be patient here, but as long as you promise to be there in here, right. I'm all right. Right, right, right. Head over to God. If it means that I only minister to a few for now, come on, sir. But you said, come on, sir. That's not that old sign. But you said, come on, sir. Even so, I wait. Yes. Because you and I are friends and you won't abandon me. My God. You promised to be, to be with me in the midst of hardship yes. and trials. Yes. As long as you're with me, I'll stay waiting on you and I'll keep on praying and seeking God. I'll keep on reading your word. I won't turn my back on you because you promised to be with me. Amen. Oh, let me get to my sermon. It says, verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord, where the Lord, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. One, two things I want to take note of One, in that verse right there. It gives a Trinitarian thought right there. Because notice he says, where the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. First, you keep in mind that the Lord title of the Lord is normally designated to the Lord Jesus Christ. But then notice he brings up with that same breath. He is the authority and authenticity of the Holy Spirit. He says, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So therefore, it keeps in mind that when, the, when God is moving in our midst, there's a harmony in heaven that God says, okay, it's time for this to see them to see me move in their midst. Because he says, there's liberty that's flowing out from the Spirit of God when he's present. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, that's what we need. We need freedom for the Spirit of God to move. Yes. No restrictions, no veils are no longer because the Spirit has come in our midst. Now the Lord is that Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Yokes are broken when the Spirit of the Lord is present. Demonic oppression leaves when the yes. Spirit of the Lord is yes. present. Yes. Your, your hardships, your, excuse me, your, your anger, your inner bitterness leaves when the Spirit of the Lord is. Because what happens is the stubborn will. Yeah. It dies before the Spirit of the Lord. You can't stay how you are when you get into the presence of God. Come on. I can give you a title all day long, but when you get into the presence of God, titles go out. That's right. The Spirit of the Lord brings the young. Yeah. Always complaining this and that. But when you get into the presence of God, God reforms you and transforms who you are. Thank you, God. Can't, you can't, I'm praying this again. You can't stay where you are when you get older, God. That's good, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, my mama was always like that. That's your mama, but who are you? That's right. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Some of us are modeling out our family history. So they in turn, we're destroying what God has put in front of us. So my God. God. Man. So my God. It's the word anyhow. My you, know, my you know, mama was like, my mama told me I shouldn't take this. Well, your mama ain't married to nobody. That's the problem. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, That's all right. Stay right there. Come on, man. Come on, man. I don't want. Like, don't talk about my mama. I don't know your mama. All right. But you can, you can. Come on, sir. Let me get back to my text. The Bible says, "I know the wise one with her own hands will destroy a house." Yes. And even for me, you can destroy what God has before you with your own hands. Yes. yes. With your own way of doing things. Yes. God. Yes. If the Spirit of the Lord is really moving and flowing in, and you are who you say you are, yes. then you can't stay how you are. Right. Yes. Right. Because you give Him liberty right. to change you. Amen. You give Him liberty yes. to do what He has Amen. to do. You give Him liberty to change your stubborn will. Yes. You give Him liberty to say, I will submit and listen. You give Him liberty to shut your mouth. Yes. I'm going to quiet. I'm going to 
be quiet on this one. You give him liberty to lay your will down and embrace his will. Give him liberty this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's the truth, amen. Man, I want him liberty. I want him, you got want your liberty in the church. I want to see you move. But when you come to who I am, you got liberty. My God, my God. <laughs> Glory to God. You don't have to go here. I just felt this in my spirit, man. Galatians. Galatians 5 and 1, it says this way. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stop there. He says, stand fast in the liberty that God has given you. Don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage. The bondage that you may have experienced in the past, all the thoughts and the tendencies that you've walked into, let it go and embrace liberty in the spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. Alright, we get to the last verse. But we all. He says, alright. Moses got it. Some of the prophets got it in the Old Testament. David got it. But not everyone could get it. He says, for this church age. But we all. With open face. Holding as in the glass. The glory of the Lord. Paul's emphasis here is not so much on the reflective capabilities of a mirror, but he speaks more of the intimacy of getting into the presence of God. A person can bring a mirror right up to his face and get an unobstructed view. So he says, God says, but we all with open face, no restrictions, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. So God says, at this church age, I'm going to be transparent and allow all to see who I am. Where Moses was the only one who got the portion or, or the revelation of the backside of God. But God says, we all, I, I, not, I don't want to be restrained any longer. Mm. Well, there's bondage, there's restraint. But he says, we all, he says, with open face, no veil needed. Oh, my God. Beholding, as in the glass, the glory of the Lord. No obstructed view. I Thank you. Now I was telling, telling uh, mother here. I said, I, told my, I was driving in West Virginia, and it's interesting. The mountains or the hills of West Virginia are so high, it's hard to see the other side. Yeah. But notice here, when I get over that hill, I see with clarity. God says, I move it all out of the way so you can see me, so you can have intimacy with me. Amen. Oh. Glory to God. Oh my God. Thank you, Amen. Amen. That glass of mirror here, Paul is contextualizing with the use of mirrors here. Corinthians was, Corinthians was famous for the Greco Roman antiquity for the superior quality of its bronze mirrors. Mirrors in Paul's day were polished metal and thus offered a far more perfect reflection. So, in other words, they had a clarity of reflection. So, keep in mind, the people of Corinth, when he started talking about glass of mirror, he said, they understood with clarity. They're talking about a perfect mirror. Wow. Clear as a, a bell. Uh, for example, there's certain, now some of us got diamonds on. Yes, zoom, cubic zirconia. And there's another, there's certain levels of diamonds. But there's another level of diamond that Kobe Bryant put on his wife, that purple diamond. And he cheated on her, he got her a huge purple diamond. He figured, it's a small price to pay for what I did. Right, right. It's the truth. But her diamond was worth over four million dollars. Clear as a bell. Yes, Mariah Carey, they said, has a diamond mm -hmm. for her new husband. She left little Nick Carey. He had the money. Right. He got a billionaire. <laughs> that billionaire put a huge rock on her finger, mm -hmm. and it's clear. Mm -hmm. When Paul speaks of a glass or a mirror, he's talking about a perfect, clear picture. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thus, wow. uh, in this passage of beholding, not reflecting, as we behold, we're transformed. Because he says, our change, that Greek word for change is metamorpho. Mm -hmm. It's the same term about a, a, a caterpillar being changed into a, a butterfly. Yeah. So he says, okay, when you get into my presence, 
you see with clarity who I am, you're changed into something new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are changed into the same image. Now, notice here, just go on with me. The word same is autos, which denotes similar to a baffling wind. So what he says, okay, you come into this contact with who I am, you're changed, but it's by the autos, or the same image. That same is an idea that I can speak of the Holy Spirit changing you into something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in the turn, you reflect a beautiful picture. My God, my God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. us reflect, God. You're changed to the same image from glory to glory. Moses had a diminishing glory for a moment. But he tells us we go from glory to glory. You've been asking God that I want a mountaintop experience like Moses. That's awesome. But God, take me from glory to glory. Move me to another level. Move this ministry to a higher realm of glory. Don't let us see where we're at. Don't let us be content for this right here. Move us from glory to glory. Move us to a higher level. Metamorphu, change us into something beautiful. Glory to God. No, it has been hard. No, there's a lot of questions of God when this one comes and this one goes. But God, you're changing us to something beautiful. I know it doesn't seem fair. Don't like that it's taking this long, but change us to a new realm of glory. Glory to God. Keep me where I'm at. I've got some questions for you, God, but. As long as you're changing me. Yes. No, it's not right that I've been through in this, this dark situation this long. Yeah. But I thank you that you're changing me. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to go. Glory. I don't know how all the finances, yes. but I know you're changing me. Yes. I don't know how we get to from A to B to C to D, but you're changing yes. us to glory. We shall see your image. Yes. We shall see your glory. It shall get better. We shall get stronger. We shall advance and do the work of God. situation now always gonna be this bleak. My God. Yes. Hallelujah. We, we don't change this from glory to glory. Amen. Man, I'm just trying to make the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to make the payment. Yeah. But I'm gonna go for the new level of glory. Amen. 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 Oh, but my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. Amen. I'm gonna make a contact with you. That my seed that I've placed in the ground will spring up eventually. Yes. I'm going to hold on and keep on being faithful to God. Yes. I'm not going to give up on who God said he'll be to me. Yes. I'm going to walk in the strength and the anointing of God through this. Amen. Yes. I shall see my expected end. Yes. By faith I shall walk into a new level of glory and prosperity. Yes. By faith the anointing of God shall rest in a greater dimension of my life. By faith I will see the hand of God over my life. By faith the glory of God shall saturate this area. By faith my household will be changed. Yes. By faith I'm not going to think the same because I'm going into a new level of promise. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. I'm not backing down for what I believe God for. Amen. I believe in a big God for big things. Amen. I'm not backing down for it. Amen. Amen. You better, you'll get better. Put your hopes not too high. No, it's going even higher. Because you promised to take me from glory to glory. Amen. You didn't mean it. You wouldn't have said it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm not going to always be 
I'll just barely make it. We just go, we go through, we just make the bills. Right? No. We're going from glory to glory. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. God, I thank you. Let me play this song. I thank you, Lord, that you're cleaning the mirror. Yes. So I can see even that. Yes, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. There's a commercial for Windex. And you know, she, the lady sprays it. Spray both sides and it cleans it so well. The glass is so clear that it fools the bird. Because it's just that clear. That's what God says. Sometimes our mirror of life, mirror, life has a way of dirtying up our mirror. All of a sudden, it's so filthy that we can't see God. God, by your power. Hallelujah. By, by your strength, help me to go through this valley. Yes, yes God. By God, by your, your glory, Jesus. help me. Yes, God. Help me. Amen. Four things I want to leave with you is that apparently Moses, because he got into the presence of God, there was a glow all over him. It was a tangible result of him getting into the presence of God. A glow. So we're getting the acronym from GLOW. Number one, GLOW, G. It's, God, it's grand because it's God's, God's touch. He's amazing. If you're taking notes, GLOW, G-L-O-W. God's touch is grand because it's amazing. The L, it lingers on us. We get it better than Moses. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's optical. Or it, has been, it can be seen in our lives. But yet also, we see it. We recognize by our spiritual eyes that I'm not the same. Ephesians 1 says that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. In other words, my optical, I see it with clarity. This is God's doing. I know God is doing this. In the midst of it, it can be all so dark. But my spiritual eyes see it differently. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory to God. I can't trace how you're going to bring me out. But my spiritual eyes have looked into the spirit realm. Yes. That there's a confidence that this too shall pass. Amen. Yes. Don't have the time. Don't know the wind. But this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. G-L-O. Oh, glory. Let me just say this. This too shall pass. Amen. You will come out of this. You will come out of this. Yes. You will see God's goodness. You will see the glory of God in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Amen. Yes. God, my God, my God. Yes. But then what happens with the W, let me say that again. You will yes. see yes. the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Don't be buried about what you what you think is going to happen. My God. But rise above the situation My God. and trust God again. My God. And you know, you know I, I just let me stop this. I was I was praying yesterday. I was getting ready. You know, you know, I was getting ready for the service, and I started to go back over some areas I've been believing God for. I said, Lord, I start to say new things unto the Lord. Amen. My, I, my spiritual eyes sense that something is changing in my life. That God has transformed me to a new area. And you know, let me say this. I don't want to base my success on television or with someone else's blessing. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Or what God has done in Apostle's Amen. life. Amen. Or what God has done in uh, Prophet Amen. Kendall's life. I don't want to base it off of what he showed me he was going to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't have a promise because of what he promised him. That's right. But what he's promised me, That's right. shut out That's right. you promised me yes. that you would bless me in the city in the field. Yes. You promised that you would come yes. a blessing upon my life. Yes. You promised that whatever I put my hand in, you would prosper. Right. You yes. promised that you, you, would, you would cause favor and grace. God is the one who bestows grace and favor. And no good thing would he withhold that the walk of right. I see the promises from what you promised upon my life. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I'm not going to faint. 
Amen. I'm going to receive. Amen. I'm going to say that with me. I will not faint. I will not faint. But shall receive. But shall receive. Say that one more time. I will not faint. I will not faint. But I shall receive. But I shall receive. All right. G, grand, L, lingers, O, it's optical, but then finally, W, it's worship. The blow is a result of my worship. This happens as we're into the presence of God. Because we talk about we turn to. That's what happens as my worship. That I get into the presence of God. And my worship takes on a new element, a new revelation, a new understanding. That all of a sudden, God gives me songs of the Spirit. That sing, sing unto God a new song. Yes. Woo. 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 Man, I, I'm not going to go any slow, but the way I describe worship, now you have all yours, but worship, in my opinion, I ain't got to, you know, I know I'm, I'm not trying to be deep, but in my opinion, what I see it from worship, worship is love, is to me. And worship speaks of God to God. Yeah. So as the blow of my worship, I start to speak of who he is. And yeah. He takes me into this new element. But then there's also another way I describe worship. Worship is love corresponding to love. Yeah. Yeah. God moving my, my filial, my natural love. Because he says, because listen, when you worship me, I need a real genuine love. So he puts his agape love in me. Yeah. So my agape love that he put inside of me responds to him. So love is corresponding to love. That's what worship is. Yeah. The glow of his glory takes me to an element of worship where I start to feel and sense the love of God. All that I may have not received as a child, he gives me. Yes. He does it for me. I can experience love again because I got into the presence of God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you. God, don't move me where I'm at. <laughs> Take me deeper, amen. Take me deeper in you. Let the glory, let the glow of your presence and the glory of your presence consume my life. It's what I need. Let me say that again because I love when I, oh, actually I got a video up on YouTube where it speaks of, worship speaks of God to God. Speaks of who he is yeah. back to himself. My God. Yeah, that's something. I'm going to get off this, but is there something that he already knows who he is? Come on. But then he says, just express it to me. Yeah. Yeah. As you speak of who I am, I come into your situation. Oh my God. Have you ever done? Lord, I worship you because you're holy. Yes. You know you're holy. But on earth, I acknowledge me. Yes. Yes, God. I acknowledge that you're the big one, you're the great one. Glory. I acknowledge how great you are. Yes. I acknowledge that you're the mighty one, the God, your Elohim. Yes. Behold, you're God and you change not. Yes. No one can usurp you off your throne. You do as you please, God. And so, God, I give you the glory. I express to you the greatness and your bigness and how worthy you are. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. For your goodness, I speak of you. For how grand you are, I give you the glory. I honor you for who you are. You're the one who delivered me. You're the one I sing a new song to you. A song of rejoicing, a song of glory, a song of honor. God. I break before you tonight. I give you the glory for what you're going to do and how you're going to deliver. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This poor day cried out to the Lord. The Lord delivered my the Holy Spirit. God, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I love you, God. Glory to you, God. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Oh, God, I worship you and honor you and glory. Your name. With hands lifted up, we glorify you, God. We give you the 